Benchmarks of the i9-11900K were just leaked in. <laughs> I'm not impressed. Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So VideoCards.com just posted an article showing the upcoming i9-11900K versus the Ryzen 9 5900X in a couple of leaked benchmarks that they got from the website Geeknetic, and apparently they got their information from a press briefing of the 2021 CES presentation. And as always, there will be links to all of my sources in the description below, and the good news, at least for Intel, is that when we take a look at these screenshots, it looks like Intel is going to be regaining their gaming crown here, so that's good news for them, but the bad news is that it's really not by a whole lot. And, you know, if we go ahead and we take a look at the 5900X right now, it does hold the gaming crown uh, when you compare it to, say, the i9-10900K. Uh, I believe on average it's somewhere around 7% faster. So, you know, AMD's lead right now isn't very impressive either, but that makes it all the less impressive when we take a look at the results from the 11900K because they didn't really have to make up a whole lot of ground. And so if we take a look at this first image here, which by the way, these benchmarks were run at 1080p with an RTX 3080, or at least that's what video card stated. But the first image here, if we compare the FPS numbers, we're looking at actually only a 2% lead for the 11900K. So that is very disappointing and a whole lot less than I was expecting. I was expecting probably somewhere around 10% faster than the Ryzen 9 5900X. And then if we take a look at this second image here, we're looking at what looks to be only a 6% increase over the 5900X on average in terms of gaming. So again, that's not very impressive. It's a lot better than the last image we took a look at. But there's one more image I want to take a look at that video cards posted, and that's an image of seven different games that were run at 1080p at the high or ultra settings with the 11900K versus the 5900X. Of course, again, with the RTX 3080. And taking a look here, we have Total War Three Kingdoms, we have Gears of War, 5, Metro Exodus, Cyberpunk 2077, Watch Dogs Legion, Far Cry New Dawn, and Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Now, if we take a look here, it's 8%, 5%, 5%, 4%, 4%, 3%, 4 and 2% faster than the 5900X. So, of course, the 11900K on average is definitely faster, but if we actually do the math here, overall, it's only 4.42% faster than the 5900X. And, of course, we don't know if any overclocking is happening here. We don't really know anything other than it's 1080p, it's high slash ultra settings, and it's with an RTX 3080. So, it's definitely possible that Intel is showing their process processor in the best light as well so this might be kind of a best case scenario and to have a best case scenario only showing 4.42 percent faster than your competitor you know overall I'm not impressed and I gotta say in my opinion this is kind of an embarrassing launch for Intel because what we're looking at here with the 11900k is only an eight core processor so you know it's it's all well and good that they're gonna be probably getting that gaming crown back but when you're looking at an eight core processor versus a 12 core processor and AMD also has a 16 core processor on the mainstream socket of AM4, well, that's just not a good look for Intel because all those content creators that do need those extra cores are still going to go to AMD. So there's still a lot of reasons to choose AMD over Intel, despite the fact that this new CPU is going to have a large IPC increase. It's going to supposedly now support 20 PCIe uh, 4.0 lanes directly from the CPU, which is all great to see. But when you're looking at an eight core deficit, that's something that Intel's going to have to tackle with their next generation of CPUs and from what I'm hearing, it looks like the Alder Lake CPUs that will likely be produced on the 10 nanometer node, which will probably be going against like Ryzen 6000 series chips are going to have eight regular cores and then kind of like eight almost mobile type of cores. They're going to be based off of a different architecture that won't be quite as strong. At least that's what I'm hearing so far. Um, it, it, so it's going to be, even when they do make it to 16 cores in their next generation, it's looking like AMD could still have a multi-core performance lead. So yeah, I'm a little bit concerned Concerned on that fact, but there's one other good thing I want to leave you with here before we wrap up this video. And despite the fact that AMD will likely still have the multi core performance lead, no matter what happens, it's pretty much good news for everyone because what we're looking at here is a situation where, you know, the Ryzen 5000 series processors are very difficult to get your hands on still. So if you're someone who's looking for Ryzen 5000 series processors, releasing new processors from Intel could make that actually easier to get those 5000 series processors. And of course, you're going to have another option. Option. So for those of you who want the fastest gaming processor and you just si simply can't get a Ryzen 5000 series chip, you will have another option to choose from and it's just going to make it better for PC builders all over the world. So whether or not you like Intel processors, I just think that this is good for everyone. But hey, that's just what I think. What do you think about these 11th gen processors? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and of course I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. 
Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.